back to Gapy's Garden. Today I'm going to show you my larger tomato varieties. This one, there's two here that are the Kenosha, and these were sent to me from someone in Kenosha, Wisconsin. These are a paste tomato that he's been growing in his family for many years, and he's been sharing those and kind of developing them over the years. But they've had a lot of blossom end rot on these guys, so I'm not too happy with how they've performed in my garden. Not all of them have it, but the majority do. That one just has a little tiny bit, so some of it you can just kind of cut off the bottom and the rest is fine, but um, and it seems like the later fruits have more of a blossom and rot problem than the earlier fruits did. But I planted two of these and the one on the left seemed to do better than the one on the right. So I'm probably not going to grow those again because I'm not too happy with how they turned out. The skin is really thin and hard to peel. Um, when you roast them for sauce. So that's another reason I don't really care for them too much. And then this one is my probably worst performing tomato this year. This was the Blue Beauty. So the tomatoes are, are various sizes, but they're just not very healthy looking and the plant itself isn't healthy looking. It's got a lot of brown leaves on it and a lot of the flowers kind of dried up and just fell off. So it's, it's, only, it's only going up about halfway up this this um, cage, which is pretty, it should be a lot taller than that. So I'm just not, I'm not even gonna bother saving seeds from that. And I haven't harvested any off of it and I don't know that I actually will. And then the next one over here is Aladdin's Lamp. This one did really well. I haven't seen any blossom end rot on these and it's a really pretty orange color and the shape is kind of neat too kind of, I don't know, well, like a, like a lamp shape, I guess, or a kind of a, a light bulb shape. But it's a very productive plant, and well, I guess we do have a little bit of blossom and rot on that one there. But most of them didn't have any problem with that. And it's grown to about this, the top of the cage. Um, I don't think I trimmed that one, so it's, it's a pretty good size. Actually, I did, looks like I did trim off there. Um, but if they get too tall, I usually trim off the, the tops of the, the tomatoes because we don't have much of a season left. And then this one over here is the Murado, and I've already harvested a few off of it. It's not super productive, um, but a lot of the flowers, they just didn't produce any fruit. And I haven't, I don't think I've seen any blossom and rot on this one either, but it hasn't gotten very big. It's only about three-fourths of the way up the cage. And then let me go around to the other side. These are the beans and the beets. So this one here is probably doing the best. This is the Peach Blow Sutton. And it's kind of a pretty light pink reddish color. And that's about the color as dark as they get. Um, so those are pretty much ready to pick down there. But they had a lot of fruits that were at the very bottom of the the plant so I've already harvested a few that were touching the ground but it didn't seem to bother the fruit at all. I have a weed cloth that I use on the bottom here so I think that helps protect it against any diseases that might be in the soil. So there's some really big nice looking fruits on on this plant. We do have some cracking over here on this tomato and it might be from the rain that we got last night. It rained pretty hard um, so that probably didn't help the tomatoes much. There's some more cracking on, on that green one there. So I'm going to be picking these, um, all the ripe ones that I can, in the next couple of days. And then over here, behind the monster zinnia, we have the giant honey. And this is the biggest tomato in the garden this year and also the last one to ripen. So finally we're starting to see some ripening on one there. But the fruits are really huge and it seems fairly productive for such a big tomato but it's just barely reaching the top of the the cage here so i'm looking forward to trying that one i'm hoping it'll be ready to to pick here in the next couple days and then the one next to it is the moon glow this is an orange variety and i've already harvested i think three or so tomatoes off of it but there's not any ripe right now these moon glows sure are pretty. It's a really dark orange, almost the same color as the Aladdin's lamp back there. 
Um, but this one only grew about a little more than halfway up the the cage, so it's a pretty short one as well. And none of these are determinate tomatoes, so I'm not sure why so many of these are not growing very tall. So I have two more tomatoes to show you, and they're over here in the greenhouse. And this is the pepper jungle. So back here in the very corner we have two tomatoes. This one is the Carib. So it's a, a fairly decent sized red tomato. Um, so I've been using that for sauce along with the aroma back here. But it's very productive. It's grown quite tall over the, over the, the height of the cage. And these cages are the same height as the ones out in the, the raised beds. But these ones seem to be growing even taller than those, and these are supposed to be determinate tomatoes. So I've already had to trim these back quite a bit because they were just getting too tall. So I'm not sure why they're growing so tall in here. But um, I'm going to be harvesting some of these. Luckily it doesn't rain in here, so these don't have a problem with, with too much splitting, so they don't get as much rain. And then this is the Oroma, which is a paste tomato. It's a pretty large paste tomato. I've already harvested quite a bit of those and they make a really good sauce tomato. There's very few seeds and the skin is pretty easy to come off, which are two traits that I really like in sauce tomatoes. So that covers all the tomatoes in the in the garden this year. Thanks for watching and I will talk to you again soon.